Now listen to me, chosen ones, the real chosen ones. You do not want to go to jail with your eyes all the way open. Do right. Follow the law. Stay in school, work. Don't break the law. Don't go to jail, especially if your eyes are all the way open. Because when you see the spiritual side of jail, police, courts, it just might drive you crazy. Look, I almost lost my damn mind because when I was going to jail at first, even when I was young, all the way up to the point where I became free from this matrix, Man, I didn't see it. But the last time I went to jail, I seen it. And I was so afraid of the truth. I never went to jail again, man. If you're chosen, if your eyes are open, and you go to prison, you just might lose your mind, man. Because you're going to see what other people can't see. When my eyes were open and I went to the L.A. County Jail, I literally seen demons. Some people see inmates. I seen demons hopping in and out of people. Some of them was looking at me. I knew them. They knew me. But they were in other people. So that's one thing that I seen that tripped me out. I never used to see it. Everybody were just inmates, gangbangers, bums, smokers, killers, dealers, and squillers. But then I started to see all of these spirits up in these people. I started seeing wolf spirits. The crazy thing about it is I seen the same spirits in the gangbangers as I seen in the sheriffs. They shared the same wolf spirit. You know, the wolf like the hunt in packs and they have their leader and the more of them it is, the more they would attack. You know, a wolf, a wolf spirit. I was seeing that. So, God always put me around another chosen one. It's very few of us, but when I see one, I know who he is and he know who I am. This time it was an OG. I don't know what he did to be up in there, but he was respected. He was quiet. And not only did he read the Bible, he wrote the Bible. Everything he read, he was writing like he was halfway done with the Bible, writing it. And he said he's going to continue to keep doing that and keep doing that until we just memorize it word for word, right? So I was blessed to be around him, and he's seen it. And I said, what am I seeing, man? And he said, legalized slavery controlled by witchcraft. I asked him, did it start here, like in the jail? He said, no, nah, it starts on the streets with the police officers and the, and the gangbangers and stuff. People that you call the OGs in your hood. I said, put me up on game, OG. Tell me when it starts. He said, first of all, you notice that there's shoes that's hung on the electrical wires in ghettos but they're not hung in Beverly Hills and, you know, the good neighborhoods. And I'm like, yeah, he said, well, that's a form of witchcraft. So I'm picturing all of the neighborhoods up in the neighborhoods that I'm growing up in. They did have shoes that was wrapped around the telephone, the telephone wires. He said that they put stuff up in there like charms, little things, and it curses the neighborhood. And I'm like, wow. Then he got into the police. He said, let me break down the police. 
He said that the police is all magic. Every single part of the police departments is all magic. When he said that, I remember what one of my homies said. One day we was driving to Venice Beach and we got pulled over by the police. And these police was actually cool and all that. They wrote me a ticket and we got on. And my homie was like, hey, that was witchcraft. That's magic. And I'm like, what you talking about? He said, have you ever been driving? And then all of a sudden, just like now, the police just pop up. And I'm like, yeah, because I was looking on the sides. There's nowhere for them to just park. I mean, I don't just drive and just look straight. I look at every single thing. Like, I don't be slipping when I'm driving because I never really have a damn license. So I'm really cautious when I'm driving, and he made a good point. They do, man. They do be hopping out of different places. Now, I know when they be, like, behind trees with the speed detector and all of that. I understand that. But there is times that I was driving, and they just popped up, man. And then I was like, what's that? And he said, that's the power of a ninja. Like, a ninja can be invisible, and just pop up. That's how ninjas used to get their enemies. Like the enemy would be smoking a cigarette, looking left and right. And then as soon as they look right again, in a split second, they get in their neck, they neck slit. I'm like, oh, so the police be working with the ninja energy. And he like, yeah. So now I'm back to OG. Okay, now I'm back in, in the LA County. I'm talking to OG. I told OG about that and he agreed. He said, yeah. He said, yeah, my homeboy know what he's talking about. And he was like, also with the siren lights, the, the red and white and blue and all of that, hypnosis. And, uh, and then he was like, okay, have you ever noticed when a person shoot at a police officer, they can empty a whole clip, 100 rounds, 200 rounds and shoot one police officer in the arm. But the police officer can just shoot a nine millimeter five times and kill three dudes. And I was like, yeah, I do notice that. It's like police are lucky, like, like, you know, they never, I mean, it's some that get popped and all that, but you know, I, I feel you, OG, they is like lucky and it's like, we just like hella unlucky. Is that because they go to the shooting range? And he like, nah, you know, if somebody got a, you know, uh, a AK or SK or something, they don't need to go to the damn shooting range. Somebody getting shot. <laughs> and I'm like, that is true. And he said, the reason that is, is because the badge. This is why the police officer have to not only give up his gun, but his badge when he get fired or suspended or something. They say he have to give up the badge for another reason, but they lie. The reason why is because that badge holds a certain amount of energy because it's the spirit behind these badges. You hear what I'm saying? This is why a police officer can roll down the street and he's from Nebraska. He don't even know the neighborhood and all of the gangbangers in the neighborhood get the running and they clearly outnumber him. This is why the prisoners stay in prisoner in prison when they outrank, they outnumber the guards, what, 20, 30 to one. It's not just because they got guns or anything like that. It's because of the badge. You hear what I'm saying? That badge triggers something in us and that badge has a spirit behind it. So I'm like, yeah, what's up with the badge, OG? And OG was like, damn, man. Looked at me like, man, you ask a lot of damn questions. But, you know, the chosen ones, we don't mind giving the information to the ones who deserve the information. So I'm talking to this dude for like three days, right? And he breaking down this. And he said, the badge, the demon that's behind the badge needs a certain amount of blood. You hear what I'm saying? And I said, where do they get the blood from? And he said, from us. And I said, what? And he said, this is where the OGs 
and the gangs and stuff come in. And then I remember, man, leaning back because I already knew what he was about to say, but how he broke it down, it just confirmed it even more. He said that all of the gangs are Freemason, all of the OGs. So when he said that, I'm thinking of Big U, I'm thinking of WAC 100. These are just some of the popular ones that, that pop in my head. But they didn't pop in my head at that time because they wasn't even famous at that time. I'm just giving you an example of some OGs that popped in my head. They was the WAC 100s and the big U's of my neighborhood. The dope dealers, the ones that never went to jail. You know what I'm saying? The ones who had connections. It seemed like they had connections with the police. And why is the enemy from the other side buying big dope from him? I thought we was beefing with them fools. Like, you know, all of this started coming to my mind when he started bringing up the OGs and how they're designed, how they are. Once they killed Tookie, Raymond, well, not Tookie, once they killed Raymond Washington and a whole bunch of others who helps establish this that don't get talked about. You hear what I'm saying? They ran with Raymond Washington. Them. Once they took out them, once they arrested the Larry Hoovers and, you know, killed all of the kings and the leaders and stuff, the generals, they replaced them with the big U's in the WAC 100s. You hear what I'm saying? They already, from birth, are connected with Freemason. Just because a person go to jail don't mean that they are not a Freemason. There's a lot of Freemasons that's in jail. There's a lot of Freemasons that's in the damn rescue mission. They everywhere. So they was already connected with the Freemasons because remember the grandmamas. Always, I already talked about the gangster grannies. Don't be a menace while drinking your juice in the hood. The grandmama who came out the trash can busting like on dead presidents. Or what about when on, on, on Friday after next, when Day Day cussed out the old ladies, who did she go get? Who did them Jehovah Witness ladies go get? Some killers. That was their grandsons. Them. That was the big use. Them. Those are the ones who, who shoot up the neighborhood, but they shoot us up. You see, they work hand in hand with the police, like Big U. They work hand in hand with the police to shed a certain amount of blood to feed the demon that's behind the badge. And I said, wow, man. He said the Bloods and the Crips and all of that, but the ones that's up there, the triple OGs, double OGs, the old ones, the pastors, the police chief, they all work hand in hand to do what? I said, what? He said, to feed the badge. You see, this is what Christopher Dorner, the L.A. County Sheriff officer, who they killed, they turned on him. Because he didn't want to feed the badge, man. All it is is witchcraft and sacrifice. And then he said, you know that it's naturally in us to have conflict and then resolve that, right? And if we separate from each other long enough, if the Bonihanas separate long enough from the PJs or the PJs just, you know, just stay in the imperial courts and the the, the grapes just, you know, stay in the Jordan down for a little bit of time. The beef, the beef will thin out. It's not like the grapes is just going to go bust all the time. And then the PJs is going to go bust all the time. It, it has feuds like a fire, like a fire. Sometimes it's peace, but, you know, ain't nobody slipping. It ain't never 100 percent peace, but it's not always wartime. And when it's not always wartime, that's when the police go put on a purple rag and roll to the, the, the imperial courts. And the OGs know this. Man, the OGs know this. The OGs are the biggest snitches, man. That dude that's rolling around the neighborhood that got all them birds. 
You hear what I'm saying? Ain't never getting caught or nothing like that. And that's the damn CIA, man, right up in your hood, man. They here to feed the badge, man. And we feed the badge. And for every one of us that get killed, they keep on starting this war up. Just like the peace treaty back up in the 90s after the riots, uh-uh, they couldn't have that. They needed to feed the badge. So they kicked it back off. The majority of the drive-bys and stuff and these child murders that, that you see back up in the 80s and the 90s, the drive-bys was really bad because a gang of kids was getting, getting shot. I got shot when I was seven years old. It was a Compton Avenue on one side of the street, and it was a, 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 a Hat Gang Watts on the other end, and they was busting at each other. And for some reason, I ran across the street to 96th Street School. We used to live on 96th in Antwerp, right up in Hat Gang Hood. And they shot me. Bam! Went to the hospital, all that, all of that. I was on the news and all that. My school, 96th Street Elementary School, they had a party for me when I came back. The principal, the auditorium. I was the little boy that got shot up in Watts back up in the early 80s. You hear what I'm saying? That's why the drive-bys was really, really dangerous because the child murders, man. But the majority of those child murders... Wasn't even from gang bangers that was real gang bangers. A lot of them was CIA gang bangers and police. So that's one way it's all magic. Even when they say freeze and put your hands in the air, like you just scored a field goal. Man, that's Freemasonry from how they twist your, twist your thumb. And can, and can make you submit just by bending your thumb. That's judo and all. Man, this is witchcraft. Listen, OG told me, he said, the reason that it's really wise to get your own attorney when you fight in crime is because they already know if you did it or not. Yeah, they, they already know if you did it. It's about money. It's not about if you did it or not. I mean, it's the guy who killed his wife. He got 10 years and up for parole in five. He killed her on camera. They said it was a crime of passion, and she wasn't even cheating at the time. On the other hand, they gave Nature Boy life with 10 years and ain't nobody died. Ain't, man, he got El Chapo numbers. He got Jeffrey Dahmer numbers. So OG is right. It's not about the crime. It's about the taxes and the money and stuff. They already know if you did it. I said, OG, oh, how they already know if I did it? He said, because the people that print your fingerprints and stuff, not all of them. But the ones, every single one who've ever printed mine or his or any one of the chosen, he called us the anointed. Any one of the anointed, it was a palm reader. And I was like, what? He said, yeah. They tell you to put your palm and I'm picturing it. I, look, every single time it was always like damn near a, a sister doing my fingerprints and she was cool. She held my wrist. She even wiped off the ink and stuff. He said when they wiping off the ink and looking, they read your palms and stuff. These are real palm readers. This, this, this ain't no joke. So they already know. You never, you never, you never realized that, huh? And I'm like, heck no, man. You see, this is why I like talking to OGs, people who lived a hard, rough life. OG been in jail like 55 times, man. He knew exactly what to do, how to do. It's like he'd be like five, four, three, two, one. And then they'd be like, count. And I ain't lying, man. You hear what I'm saying? He put me up on a lot of game. Yeah, man, it's all witchcraft. And I was like, I remember I used to be like, 
this person really is rubbing my palm, the palm of my hand, and getting this ink off real, real good. It really feel good. And then they roll your hand on that, that thing, and then they do it with the camera, and they looking at it and stuff. What about when you put your right hand up in the court? He said that that's palm ring. People can do that fast. People can do that. People, look, there are some people who is palm readers, tarot card readers, and all that, and they bloodline like they great, 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 great grandmama did it, and on down and on down and on down and on down. They still got the tarot card deck of the 1800s that they grandma used to do, man. I didn't seen these people. That's why I know that although I know a lot of stuff about, you know, the left hand path, I can I can do things to people, I can manifest stuff. I, I have to lean on the most high because I know there's some heavyweight, triple, triple black belts. I done seen it, man. I didn't seen people that was 20 years old, man, that can stop the show. You hear what I'm saying? It works for the dark side, man. We have no power outside of Christ. I'm telling you that right now. I go into the courts, how all of that, because he told me that too. I'm just starting with the streets, how, how we even get to the courts, if we even get to the courts, if we make it to the courts instead of the morgue. You hear what I'm saying? Because their mission is to either put you in jail as a slave, and that's a whole nother witchcraft I'm going to get into, or put you in the morgue. And that feeds, it's like it feeds the city, man. Every city has an archangel over it. Then it has its governors and, you know, like a chain of command. The mayor, the governor, all of those, like it's like that in the spiritual realm. You hear what I'm saying? And the one that governs over the police, the badge. Oh yeah, it's bloodthirsty. So all the people that you be seeing that be getting killed by the police and they put them on the news, those are public executions, sacrifices to feed the badge, man. Peace.